Muslim Britain wants many different things. But there are some issues on which there is a striking consensus. Conflict will be the result when this consensus is opposed to the values of British democracy. And for a tiny number of radicals, these are conflicts to be settled through violent action. Finding a way to deal with these issues, therefore, is vital. If British society, if British politicians can't do deals with Muslims where there's a strong Muslim consensus, then we really do have a problem. Because then moderate Muslims will be thrown back onto the radicals' agenda. One of the fundamental values that Britain holds dear is freedom of speech. But it's a value which Muslim Britain rejects. An overwhelming number of British Muslims believe that free speech must have its limits, that no one should be allowed to insult their religion. These tensions came to a head when the Danish cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad with a bomb on his turban were circulated all over the world. They have come together to insult the message of Muhammad In London, extreme protests followed, showing both the fury of some Muslims and the severity of the punishments they appeared to demand. Although only held by a very small minority, it is these views that seem to pose the greatest threat to the tolerance that so defines this country. To understand why some Muslims take such an uncompromising position, I talked to Muhammad, a 23-year-old British-born Muslim. He lives in North London with his family, but wanted to meet me in a coffee shop. Muhammad studied at art college and now works as a freelance graphic designer. How do you feel about the, uh, you know, those cartoons um, that uh, abuse the name of the Prophet? If people have cartoons insult the messengers, it affects globally the Muslims worldwide. Not 1.5 Muslims in the UK, 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. I mean, they were not published in this country. Where was the condemnation? Where was the uh, demand that, they, that these, these kind of cartoons, cartoons be stopped? that people be punished. Beheading the people who did it, yeah. is that what should have happened? Now in Islam there is punishment for certain crimes. Like for example if somebody is murdered, uh, the, we do have, have punishment in Islam, death penalty. Or if somebody is raped, we believe in death penalty for them. The same thing, anybody who insults the messengers, any messenger, Jesus, Moses, Muhammad, we believe they have tested their sentence. The offence caused by the Danish cartoons also led many more moderate Muslims to protest. They did not call for such extreme punishments, but they still wanted to stop the publication of anything that offended their religion. People who publish the cartoon of Prophet Muhammad should be punished to a certain extent because that was so hurtful and it was so offensive. And you know what, you should, everyone should be like sensitive towards other people's faith. In Brixton, I met 29-year-old Abdul Haq, born a Christian, converted to Islam at 17. He's one of the many who believe there's no room for compromise on freedom of speech. A new law is the best way to ensure no one offends his religion. Uh, from a non-Muslim perspective, we say free speech, you can basically say whatever you like. What's wrong with that? The problem with that is, is that where are the kind of boundaries or the limitations to that? That is the problem. What are the boundaries and limitations for you? Um, for me, it would be kind of those things which maybe some people might hold as uh, sacred. But do you think we should have laws kind of to state that? It would be preferable, because otherwise, um, if they weren't let these kind of legislations in place, then you, people are obviously going to get very um, irate. Uh, there are common grounds with regards to respect, respecting each other. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, I wouldn't kind of disrespect any of your relatives or your, you know, your family members or your mother. So how do you stop people coming out on the streets with placards saying, you know, behead, behead these people who abuse the, the, the name and image of the Prophet? Even though we find that repulsive, um, behead those who insult Islam, at the same time, it's, you know, equally repulsive. I mean, that which, you know, sparked off in the first place, it was equally, you know, repulsive, if not even more so. It's really very clear that we have no centre ground on this issue. There are things that Muslims want protected as sacred and unassailable. And on the other hand, this is a secular society in which religious sensitivities are hardly an issue. So, either we self-censor or we publish and we create mayhem. Further conflict may be unavoidable, as Muslims are united in wishing to curb the right to speak freely.